saying things people already know out loud is tight. Get out of my head! It's cool to know other people think about this stuff too. This is... Hey! If you don't stop, I will contact the Usher. What's up everyone, it's Adam from FWCI. This is the FWC Comedy Catch-Up, episode 4. It's been a while since I did episode 3. I've been completely bogged down with reacting to episode uh, episodes uh, of The Boys. Chippendale Rescue Rangers movie, which was insane. Uh, Miss Marvel just came out. Uh, I've got a job. Um, I, a whole bunch of other time-sensitive stuff came out, so that's taken my time up. And I had some technical issues as well, which dragged all of that out even longer. But... We're back with a uh, comedy catch-up. This is going to be... I think this is actually the same lineup we had on the last one. So we're, we're doing a do-over. Um, Bruce Jew was the carryover champ last time with the Airsoft Rifles sketch. So we're going to kick things off with Bruce Jew. But then we've got a new Ryan George video to check out. And I'm going to have a look at Garn again. The uh, Aussie comedian. Uh, I did a reaction to his Every KFC Worker Ever video, which was... Very fucking interesting, and I share a whole heap of uh, memories of working at KFC as a teenager and all the um, insane bullshit that went on there. So go check that out if you're interested in that. Let's have a look at Bruce Jew, Childhood Regrets. Then we'll have a look at Garn's video, Every Aussie High School Teacher Ever, which should be fun. And Ryan George, What Google Search Is Like in 2022. Let's have a look at some Bruce Jew. All right. You ever think back to when you were a kid about some of the screwed up or embarrassing things that you took part in? You know what I'm talking about. Maybe you were the kid that peed your pants in the second grade during a spelling test. Or maybe you drop kicked your best friend off a trampoline and broke his pelvis. Whatever it is, I think it's safe to say that we all have some deep-seated childhood regrets that we all carry around with us. Like, for example, one time when I was a kid, me and my sister decided to order a pizza. And the only problem with that was, it was the middle of winter, and it was like a goddamn stage 3 blizzard outside. Now, what kind of asshole makes somebody deliver a pizza this hellish nightmare. <laughs> this fucking whop is outside and shit. Who does such a thing? Well, nine-year-old me and my older sister, that's who. So after like two hours of us ordering the pizza, our doorbell goes off, and like a piece of shit, my sister sends me out to face the poor bastard to get our pizza. So I open the door, and of course, the delivery guy's this old dude all hunched oh, over, freezing his ass off. Oh, hi there, Sonny. Sorry I took so long. I almost slid into oncoming traffic getting here, and I have arthritis in both of my cankles, so I can't move so fast. Holy hell, what a complete... <laughs> complete perfect asshole I felt like taking this guy's pizza. And to make matters worse, all my sister gave me to tip this guy was some crumpled up crusty ass dollar bill that looked like somebody blew their nose into it. So I hand it over to the guy, when all of a sudden, a fucking gust of wind rips it right out of my hand, and the thing goes tumbling off into the abyss, never to be seen again. Now this feeble old man's just staring at me, arthritic cankles and all. What the hell am I supposed to do in this situation? Well, what I should have done was got old man River out of the elements there, served him some hot cocoa, and made him my honorary grandpa. But instead, I just fucking shut the door in his face. I was like eight years old, all right? I didn't know what the hell to do in a situation like that. Uh, okay, have a good day then. I guess I'll die now. And that was it. I sat down and ate Fuck. some pizza, and I never told anybody about that experience ever in my life. So now as a grown-ass man, 20 years later, I'll be laying in bed at night, and I'll just randomly start thinking of that old guy freezing his ass off. Yeah, that's gonna be a fun one to explain when I'm standing outside the pearly gates and shit. Uh, it says here that when you were nine, you attempted to murder an old man for a Little Caesars one-topping? Do you have anything to say for yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to plead the fifth on that one, Pete. But you see, that's the kind of shit that I'm talking about. Childhood regrets that you'll never live down. Now, another childhood regret of mine was all right in terms of that kind of stuff i think the only re regret along those lines was probably like uh you know just annoying like an old neighbor probably somebody that has like mental issues and stuff like that but as kids you just enjoy getting a rise out of somebody so you you know you, you kick the ball against his fence like little cunty things like that i guess i took part in but can't think of anything overly, like, horrifyingly regretful like that one there. Yeah, so when right. I was over at my friend Zachary's house that lived across the street. And Zachary was a weird-ass kid. But we'd always put up with him because he always had the coolest toys growing up. I mean, he had the talk boy from Home Alone. He had Furbies coming out the ass. He had the fucking robot from Rocky IV. The kid had it all, what can I say? But the thing that we were most envious of was his gigantic Pokemon card collection. 
And this was back in the 90s, when kids valued Pokemon cards more than life itself. Michael, if you ever touch my holographic Charizard, I'll find and murder your entire bloodline. Do you understand me? Damn. But Zachary didn't care about his Pokemon cards at all. They're all spread out in his room, all willy-nilly. They're all ripped and bent up and shit. His ass would practically tap dance all over him. He had so <laughs> many of them, he didn't care. And that shit made us sick to our stomachs. Oh. I mean, it would be one thing if these were just energy and trainer cards we're talking about. But the kid had a holographic Zapdos on the middle of his floor, for Christ's sake. To us, it was like fucking animal abuse for fake animals. <laughs> Somebody should have called the fake humane society on his ass. So after seeing Zachary's blatant disrespect Stole towards the holographic his Zapdos, what the hell did I decide to do? Well, what I should have done was take Zachary aside and be like, Dude, I've seen a kid beat another kid over the head with a pogo stick for a fucking holographic Zapdos. Get your shit together and take care of your Pokemon cards. But instead, I fucking pocketed that holographic Zapdos. <sighs> Yeah, that's right, I stole it. I'm not proud of it, but with my broken nine-year-old logic, I wasn't stealing it so much as I was rescuing it from a life of cruelty. So now after all these years later, I'm still filled with regret because I stole this kid's I kind of remember being in trouble for stealing someone's basketball card, to be completely honest. that This is like uprooting something right now. <laughs> Shiny fucking piece of cardboard. Well, what the hell am I supposed to do? Track down Zachary's goofy ass and be like, Hey, uh, I know we're both grown-ass men now, <laughs> but uh, that's a Pokemon card that I stole from you back when Bill Clinton was in office. <laughs> All right then, uh, see you later. Oh, and uh, by the way, you're a cartoon on the internet, and uh, I didn't bother to change your real name. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> So if you're watching this, Zach, I just want to say sorry about the petty theft, and if you want your Zapdos back, well, I still have it, because I take care of my goddamn Pokemon cards. Alright, let's do wow. one more memory about me being a piece of shit, and we'll be done with okay. it. Now this time, we're in my next-door neighbor Michael's front yard, and we're doing what most dirty little kids were doing in the 90s. We're playing WWF Front Yard Wrestling, that's As what you we're do. doing. And this particular matchup was between my friends David and Michael. David, of course, was Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Michael, on the other hand, was Bill Goldberg. Of course, we told Michael that he couldn't be a WCW character, but naturally, Michael didn't give a fuck. So there they are, fighting to the death in Michael's front yard. I'm playing the role of referee in this shitty wrestling match. And to call it wrestling to begin with was a stretch of the imagination. I mean, you got David over there, like, ripping the hair out of Michael's scalp and shit. I'm just standing there like, Doc, okay, I'll allow it. That's a completely legitimate wrestling move. Well, things start getting a little dicey when these two idiots start getting a little too close to the sidewalk. Now, what I should have done in this situation would have been like, Hey, you idiots, get back over here. Yeah, so you're the referee, man. On the sidewalk. But what I did instead was not say a goddamn thing. I mean, there's a Styrofoam <laughs> championship belt on the line, for Christ's sake. I can't interrupt the match now. Well, imagine my surprise when David pulls off a haphazard German suplex and he cracks Michael's head on the sidewalk. And I gotta say, it was loud. It's not like a fucking 30 out 6 going off the neighborhood. <laughs> At the time, I thought Michael's brain just exploded on impact. I was almost positive people on the street were calling the cops like, Yeah, hello, police! Get the paddy wagon! I just watched a kid in a Scotty Pippen jersey get murdered in cold blood! Thankfully, to our surprise, Michael sits up, <laughs> and uh, while he's looking a little disheveled, to say the least, uh, Michael, are you alright? Michael. So now, what did me and David decide to do? Well, what we should have done was run inside and get Michael's drunk-ass stepdad and be like, Hey, uh, Mr. Michael's stepdad, we were being deeply irresponsible, <laughs> and I think we might have just scrambled Michael's brains into oblivion. As long as he doesn't have to feed the whole damn neighborhood, it's fine. And left Michael to die by the street. I know, Boys. it was a shitty thing to do, but again, we were like nine years old, and we didn't want to get in trouble. Hell, we even went back and grabbed the styrofoam belt before Michael's stepdad came outside flipping out. Wow, what the hell's going on out here? Michael, fix that stupid look on your face and get your ass inside. <laughs> now, in the end, Michael was all right from that whole event. I mean, he probably had a mild concussion at least, but, uh, well, it was the 90s, so it was no big deal. What? What do you mean your head's fuzzy and you can't remember how to tie your shoes? Oh, rub some dirt in it and stop being a wuss. So Michael, Thank if you're you. watching this, I'd like to apologize on behalf of me and David. <laughs> we shouldn't have left you there on the side of the street. But at the same time, I'm going to... <laughs> I love the fact that Michael still wearing that same Scotty Pippen jersey in the current day. <laughs> to apologize on behalf of me and David. We shouldn't have left you there on the side of the street. But at the same time, I'm going to stand by my call. It was a technical knockout and David's still champion. <laughs> well, I guess you can suck it. The end. BruceLew.com Oh, that was funny. Um, I do distinctly remember this kid came over to my house and I really didn't like him. His dad was my soccer coach. I'm kind of identifying him right now with well, I guess what for the fucking 12 people that know who this person is um he came over and we were climbing a tree out the front of my house big tall tree and um 
I didn't like him and I remember like convincing him that he could drop from one of the branches and I don't think he broke his ankle but he fucked himself up pretty fucking royally there were tears and felt kind of bad because I knew that he would probably hurt himself if he did it but I just didn't fucking like the kid he was just annoying as hell so when he's like do you think I can do this drop I was like yeah I do it all, all the time. I'd never done it because it was too goddamn high. So I don't know. Maybe that's my deep childhood. I don't. Do I regret that though? <laughs> it's a shit cunt thing to do. If you want to look at it with like Aussie slang, these are shit cunt things to do. They are shit cunts. That's exactly what this was all about. So <laughs> fun episode of Bruce Drew there. Let's have a look at the next one, which is Gan. Uh, every Aussie high school teacher ever. Um, I've seen some videos like this from uh, Superwog and Auntie Donna, and they're all pretty accurate, which makes me think that the Aussie high school teacher experience throughout the, like, you know, 90s and 2000s was all pretty fucking consistent across the nation. So let's have a look at Garn. Let's see if he can knock off Bruce Jew this week. Sick it. Oh, and I got a minty in the desk for whoever can get this fucking screen back up, eh? <laughs> Oh, what have I got here, gents? Oh. Hey, Charlie John and Book the Telly from the Lord. And you lost the gents, right? You can all thank Lachlan. There goes your viewing <laughs> of the Magic School Bus right at the door. Very disappointing. Boy, yeah. I've been in a class where we've had the TV brought in and then take it away. Oh, fuck. That wouldn't happen to be a sports uniform on a Wednesday, mate. What up, gum? Five bits of rubbish spins there. I'm not asking you, Liam. Get into it. Welcome, mate. I can see your laptop screen right here, bud. Right, let's get off the cool mass games and get into the worksheet, all right, please? You're only allowed to play cool mass games when you're finished with the worksheet, all right? You should all know that by now, guys. Very disappointing. <laughs> uh, no food in the classroom, thanks, Lachlan, mate. Unless I get some. Yeah, food tax, mate. I mean, you got to learn about tax sometime, mate. <laughs> Essentially how it works is 30% uh, of your hard-earned chicken crimpy <laughs> now belong to me. And uh, that's just life, mate. You'll have to learn to deal with that. Don't hate the play, <laughs> mate. Hate the game. All right, that's it, Lachlan. Your name's going right up on the board, mate. Yep. You're staying back for one minute at lunch. Right, oh, two minutes at lunch. Yep, three minutes. Yep. We can make it as long as you want, mate. All right, no worries. Just like your mum's favourite TV show, mate, you're in for a solid 60 minutes. <coughs> Tonight's top story, you got fucking no shapes left. I'm coming for the rest of them, you little cunt. Daniel, <laughs> Yep, distinctly remember my name being put on the, uh, on the board. There was a consequences, um, like, white... Uh, no, we didn't really have whiteboards. They were all like chalkboards back in those days. We had like a consequences column. My name was often in there. Fuck it up. Mate, you got to be wearing a school jumper on school grounds, mate. Can't be wearing an origin jersey, all right? You're fucking <laughs> spastic. Pull your head in, mate. How come there's always one cunt class of fucking Rubik's Cube? What's wrong with the Rubik's Cube? What's up with that? Fellas, Miss Johnson needs three big strong boys to go help us set up the hall, all right? Who have I got? Yep. Now fuck off, Lachlan, you're a shit. Or a fucking guitar. I mean, what is this, American Idol? No, it's fucking Mass 8. When you're failing. Now remember guys, I don't actually have any teaching qualifications. <laughs> All right, Lachlan, grab four. your stuff, mate, off you go. Nah, off you go, mate, straight to the office. I've had it up to here with you, mate. Grab your smiggle, and I'll be All ringing them this time the too, mate. Board. So don't even think about hiding in the toilets again, because they'll be waiting for you. Enough silly buggers, gents. All right, who threw the bloody apple? Was it Lachlan? I bet it was Lachlan. A little shit. Don't worry, fellas. He'll be coming in on Saturday cleaning up. Why is Lachlan being victimised by this teacher? Lachlan might be a shit cunt. We've already discussed shit cunts. Fucking Lachlan. Fucking Lachlan. All right, guys. So I'm uh, I'm out of shit for you to do today. So what do you reckon we just dim the lights and watch Remember the Titans for the forty seventh time, mate? What do you reckon? Beautiful. Here we go, guys. You got it. You got it. Lachlan. Cheers for watching the video, boys. Now, huge shout out to everyone for getting us to 100. <laughs> oh, Lachlan, you fucking useless cunt. All right, that was uh, better than the last one we watched, which I think was the uh, every uh, tradey, every trades, tradesman, trades bloke, trades lady these days, I guess. Every trade person out there, which was, eh, okay, that one was a lot more fun. But... What Google search is like in 2022 by Ryan George. Uh, I'm quietly very excited for this. I just watched an episode of um, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver and he talked about Google searches and how Google can like take money away from websites by putting those little answer things in there. And it's, it was a very um, 
a revealing kind of uh, story to hear about. So I'm, I'm all caught up on Google Ads. Let's have a look at what Ryan George has got to say about this one. This video is sponsored by Raycon. More about them at the end of the sketch. What's all this about? Hey Google, so I need a new computer monitor. Oh hey man, did you know that today is George Bernard Hansberg's 135th birthday? Uh, no, I don't know who that is. Is that like the world's oldest man or something? Oh no, he died like 50 years ago, but he was born on this day. He was the inventor of the pogo stick. Oh. All right, cool. So would you like to see a little drawing about that little doodle? Ah, no, no thanks. That's not really why I'm here. <laughs> a couple of paragraphs about the history of the pogo stick. You know, I don't mind that Google just has random information on there these days and these random, each day, like the Google logo is something different. I appreciate that. Appreciate the attention to detail. Thick. I'm good. I'm just, I want to know what is the best computer monitor. I want to do a bit of research before I buy one. Oh, 100%, my man. I've got 5 billion results for you. All right. I mean, those won't all be necessary, but I appreciate the effort for sure. Took me less than a second. That's obviously, that's very <laughs> impressive. Uh, so what's the first result? Oh, well, first off, I've got a whole row of monitors for sale you could buy those right now look at that there's pictures too all right are those the best ones oh i don't know these mm. companies paid me to put those at the top they might be good right i'm yeah. trying to find information on which the best ones are it's a little messed up that you put that right there google no it's not they paid me for that positioning fair and square they immediately show up when i search best computer monitor but they might not be the best computer monitors correct and you don't see a problem with that correct okay uh let's move past that area i guess okay well let's take a look at the first result after the little shopping yeah a fucking ad reason all right okay so i mean this one looks fantastic it says save on the best selling computers laptops and monitors see it hits all the keywords that you asked me for right okay i mean that's not even in the proper context right just because they're the best selling doesn't mean they're the best no i guess not hey wait a second it says ad next to it this isn't even as funny as it is, just fucking horrifyingly accurate. <laughs> yeah, it does, because I feel like I should disclose someone did pay me to put that there. So that's not even a real result either. <laughs> it depends no. how you define result, you know? I mean, you entered keywords, and as a result, I showed you this ad. Okay, let's move on to the next one, I guess. Sure, no problem. This one is called Tech Consumer Review, and it's got reviews of a bunch of monitors. All right, now we're on to something. Okay, why does that one say ad next to it, too? <laughs> well, somebody paid me to put someone that. Someone paid you to put that there. I got yeah. it. Yeah, because see, if you find a monitor you like on their site and you buy it through their Amazon affiliate link, they get like five or 10% of the sale. So it's a, it's a pretty good deal for them. Oh, cool. okay. So that's a pretty big incentive for them to recommend the more expensive monitors as the best ones. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, sure. Okay. How about let's just move on to the first result that you haven't been paid. Did Ryan George watch last week tonight as well? Because this is exactly what I fucking learned on that show. Need <laughs> to put in that position. Oh, scrolling a little bit, huh? Yeah, man, I mean, I feel like I shouldn't have to do that, but here we are. Okay, so the top result is 10 best computer monitors 2022. Yeah, that's, yeah, that sounds like what I need, I guess. All right, let's check it out. Look at that, hey, that's not too bad. Okay, that is riddled with computer monitor ads. How did that happen? Well, I mean, obviously I got excited about you being on the market for a new <laughs> monitor, so. So I, you know, told the entire internet. Kinda not cool, Google. Well, don't you see now the highest bidder can get your business. That's not what's best for me though, is it? Oh God, no. Hey, by the way, how is this the top result? That is an obviously low quality website. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, the site's pretty terrible, but they got some really good SEO going on. SEO? Search engine optimization. Basically the site tells me exactly what I wanna hear, so I'll put it high in the results. So they're kinda gaming your system. Oh, oh. absolutely, yeah, it's a whole industry. I just want information from real this is so fucking accurate. The, the talking about like I told the whole internet. I don't. I avoid putting my details anywhere for any fucking reason now because companies can sell that information to another company who can then sell it to another company and they they can sell it to another company and any one of those fucking companies in that chain could be morally corrupt or bankrupt and sell it on or deal with um people that are doing scams people that target you for, for like online like very highly targeted ads a friend of mine lost a whole bunch of cash um on a bitcoin thing he was in the market for bitcoin and got fucking targeted by this ad thought it looked legit 
Turns out it fucking wasn't. So this shit is so fucking serious. <laughs> People that aren't actively trying to get my money. Yeah, good luck with that. This is the internet we've built. Oh, you know what? Show me results for best computer monitor Reddit. Ah. Yep, that'll get me results from actual okay. humans. That's actually pretty smart. Okay, so the first result is this thread about how the Wasus 22 is the best monitor of the year. There we go, that's information I can use. And then the second result is a thread about how the Wasus 22 is a piece of garbage. Okay. Yeah, humans don't really yeah. agree on anything. That's, yeah, I forgot about that part, I guess. Yeah, that'll do it. Wow, yeah, accurate, accurate, accurate. Very fucking accurate and terrifying that that is the reality that we live in. So <laughs> that one, I found that wildly entertaining, but I didn't find it that funny because again, way too close to the horrifying reality that is the existence that surrounds us at all times. Um, so let's rank these three here. What are we gonna, we got the high school teacher from Ghan and what of the Google searcher. We're gonna put Ryan George at the bottom. Uh, the Google one again, like I just explained, it is more realistic and horrifying than funny, even though I find it incredibly fucking well written. The jokes were all 100% correct. It's just a really fucking scary topic if you look into it kind of thing. Um, then number two, every Aussie high school teacher ever, Gun. Again, another pretty decent one I can relate to quite a bit in that one there but i don't know his his sketches seem to like start and then sort of they don't hold uh, maybe he could shorten his sketches down a little bit would that help like have like cut out some of the the filler and stuff like that i don't know but it was still pretty entertaining but number one this is the second episode in a row it's two-time champ Bruce Jew, Childhood Regrets, that video was hilarious. I love hearing stories about uh, people's childhood and the insane bullshit that they got up to. Because there's always like something nuts. Like people will be so sadistic to their siblings. I mean, I remember specifically my brother who's like, I think two years younger than my sister, uh, threw a tissue box at her across the, across the lounge room. And she had braces and the tissue box like hit her right in the lip and it like cut her lip open and there was blood everywhere and shit like that. This is my siblings. My brother just launched a um, tissue box into her face. <laughs> that's what you do with your siblings. That is, well, maybe not anymore. That's the, what, maybe that's not what people do anymore. But yeah, back in the 90s, uh, we used to beat the shit out of each other, like punching each other constantly. I remember one time punching my brother in the face and then immediately running off to lock myself in the bathroom. Um, I kept threatening to punch him in the face. I'll punch you in the face. I will punch you in the face. And he's like, go on then, punch me right here. He got like super cocky. He's six years older than me. So he's, that would have been like, you know, 10, he's 16 kind of thing. Punch me right here. And I just wound up and haymakered the living shit out of him. I don't think I'd ever punched anyone at that point in my life. He was shocked. I was fucking shocked. And then I ran away, locked myself in the toilet because it was the only room with a locking door on it. And uh, yeah, fucking stayed there until the parents got home. And we probably both got in trouble. I don't know. But fun times. Great episode of Bruce Jew. Let me know in the comments what you guys want me to have a look at next time. There will be more Bruce Jew on the next episode. I bring in some more whitest kids you know. Uh, maybe some more Auntie Donna. I don't know. Let me know what other um, uh, challenges you want uh, to see go after Bruce Jew in the comedy catch up episode five. But. Until then, everyone, be well, stay safe, look after your friends. See you in the next video. Peace.